of the Caliphate Centenary. Please do extend a warm welcome to His Holiness Hadrat Mirza Mazur Ahmed. With fellow worshippers in over 176 countries, our British Ahmadiyya Muslim community will continue to work for peace and tolerance and to strengthen interfaith dialogue both here and abroad. I know that both you and Hazel will continue to keep me abreast of all the many successes of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Britain. Please do pass on my appreciation and thanks to everybody gathered with you today and through them to the many Ahmadiyya Muslims making such a contribution to the country. Best wishes, Gordon. If I just could say just a couple of words. I think this gathering today puts our you know, relatively minor political differences into perspective. Um, uh, I know why so many politicians are here. They're here because they understand the, com the commitment to peace uh, throughout the world by the Amity Committee. I know why so many politicians are here. They're here because they've met people in their own communities from the Ahmadiyya community and that, that is why we all uh, pledge our support and thank you for, for what you do. And just to prove that political differences are, are, are very minor, I've already told His Holiness that, that uh, this is one of my very favourite, although she's in a different place, but one of my favourite members of Parliament. And I can also add that uh, uh, Her Majesty required me to join her armed services. I tried to persuade uh, that, that, that it would be better for the armed services if I didn't join, but they, in the end, made me. And uh, I was based in central London here, but I lived in Orpington. And way back in the early 60s, uh, I voted Liberal Democrat for Lord Avery and helped get him into Parliament. And, and he's done so much over the years. So thank you, Your Holiness, and, and, and th thank you, Justin, for, for helping to organise this. It's a great event and very humbling for us to come here amongst you all. Thank you for all you do. Your Holiness, Secretary of State uh, and friends, um, I guess we're uh, here to show the breadth of the welcome that is given to you all. And that's only fair because, Your Holiness, you've been very good and welcomed so many of us uh, to your headquarters uh, and, as Dominic Grieve said a moment ago, to your great celebration uh, in the summer, the gathering of the thousands, uh, all there to be taught uh, and to share, but also to welcome. And I just want to reflect very quickly three things which have impressed me over that year. One is that you have been extremely welcoming here. Yes, Britain has welcomed the headquarters of the Amadies in this country, but it hasn't become something that's become, as it were, a closed sect in Britain. It's become a community that has sought to reach out to all of us, uh, across parties, in parties, outside parties, in the community where you're based, uh, in southwest London and elsewhere. And that's very important because the best way to break down the barriers of misunderstanding and prejudice is for that contact to happen, and I thank you for that and for all your colleagues. Uh, secondly, as a London MP, I'm very proud, like Alan and others, I'm very proud that you have your uh, base with us. We're the most cosmopolitan city in Europe, probably the most cosmopolitan city in the world, and it's very important to us that all the great faiths of the world are represented here because it's very important that we learn to live as we want the rest of the world to live in places that are much less tolerant than here. We have to exemplify, we have to show uh, what is the best practice in learning from each other. There are many people of faith here uh, and many people of different faiths and beliefs. And the best communities in the world are where there is absolutely complete respect for those different faiths and beliefs and support for people's rights that follow from that to associate freely, to worship freely, to preach, to teach uh, and to engage people. And so we're very privileged about that too. But thirdly, I hope we're here as we celebrate your centenary to remember that the work of arguing for uh, religious tolerance and religious freedom is not yet completed. Every time I have been with your colleagues, we have been reminded how uh, both in Pakistan but also in other places of the world, people are not free always to practice the faith of their choice. And we have to make sure that we go on working internationally 
uh, Chilean, now the Minister for Europe, but other ministers in the Foreign Office, to, to challenge regularly places where people do not have the same freedom as we enjoy here. And I think collectively, the fact that there is such a broad cross-section of colleagues from both houses indicates that there is a commitment to continue to argue that case and to work for that world where in every single country people can be free to practice the faith of their choice and follow the beliefs that they believe are right for them. That work is not yet done, but we pledge ourselves on your centenary to do it increasingly vigorously so that there are many, many more places in the world where Amadis can live in peace and in freedom and be equal citizens. Thank you very much. Brothers and sisters, salam alaikum. It's my immense privilege to be asked to propose the vote of thanks to His Holiness for the wonderful address that he gave us earlier on, and which has already been welcomed by others. But may I say to me how impressive it was as underlining the moral dimension of what we're all trying to do, what Gillian Merrin spoke of as the objectives of the Foreign Office promoting inclusion, respect for human rights, and that includes particularly freedom of religion, which are denied to the Ahmadis in so many parts of the world. Your Holiness spoke about conflict prevention, conflict solution, which are also vitally important tasks of the Foreign Office, the promotion of conflict prevention, and we are engaged in many parts of the world in trying to solve the disputes that occur between people, some of which have a basis in denial of human rights. We, we all know which they are. But it, it, as concerns the Ahmadis, mention is made particularly of Pakistan and the infamous blasphemy laws that were introduced by Zia ul Haq in that country and which are still perpetuated in spite of the fact that they've returned now to a democracy. In, uh, Bangladesh, there have been problems, suspended at the moment, but never utterly guaranteed that they won't return when you have an organization there and in other parts of the world called the um, Katme Nabuat, which wants to deny the Ahmadis their freedom to practice their religion as they see the work of Islam, and we've heard that explained to us by Your Holiness, uh, many of the values of which we share, and it's difficult for us to understand why anybody would object to the promotion of these values as part of a multicultural and multi-religious society. And yet we see in many parts of the world where this Khatme Nabuat flourishes that people want to deny the Ahmadis the freedom that we all enjoy here and that we try to promote through the Foreign Office and the rest of the world. So we are grateful, as has been said, for the presence of the Ahmadiyya community in this country, always to remind us of the obligations that we have to other peoples in the world to promote their freedoms and to prevent the conflicts that frequently do arise. So thank you very much, Your Holiness, for your wise words of wisdom, and I am hoping that we'll all take them into consideration and apply them in our own lives. Thank you so much.
your holiness. I've got, I've got this very undeserved as I've had the opportunity to say how much I welcome your work and enjoy this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.